And it's that time of the week again, let's do the news roundup. Fabled King Midas was said to have the golden touch. Whatever he touched turned to gold, which was kind of a mixed bag, if you know what I mean. EA, on the other hand, has what I would call the reverse Midas touch. Everything they touch turned to shit. I have a history with EA buying companies and then the next game they put out after the acquisition is shit. So. I'm one of those people who just will hate EA forever, but I was holding out hope for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Like I've mentioned in this channel before, I was a massive fan of the original series back in the mid 2000s. And when they rebooted the franchise a few years ago, I was very excited. I bought a PS4 just to play that game and it was a piece of shit. So EA was putting out a second Battlefront and some of the things they said they were gonna fix was, well, everything. And I knew I wasn't supposed to hold out hope. This is EA we're talking about. I should not have been so excited for this, but I couldn't help it. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, so I, I, was, I was excited. I, I thought for sure they weren't gonna fuck this up again. And guess what? They did. There's a lot of controversy about the inclusion of loot boxes in the game, which is basically a way of the game to trick you into either you have to grind a lot to get the things you actually want to, to use in the game that you fucking bought, or you can buy it outright using real life money. In a game that you already bought, it's things that... It Okay, it's like if somebody sells you a box, right? You buy the box, okay, this is your box now. And then you open the box and there's smaller boxes inside that you have to pay to unlock, which is fucked. If they made the game cheaper because of that, so that the loot boxes are subsidizing the cost of the game, like with the freemium model, you're not, if the, if the game is free, they can do whatever the fuck they want, you didn't pay for it. But in a, in a retail game that I'm paying full price for, 80 of my hard earned Canadian dollars, you're gonna pull this shit on me? We hadn't seen a Star Wars game Game since 2012's Star Wars Connect, which was, wasn't was so much of a game as much as it was a flailing around simulator, but I guess that can be said about any Connect game. It's You know it's bad when the footage for your game looks like a parody out of The Onion. And, and this is not a joke, I, that's what I actually thought. When I first saw footage of Star Wars Connect, the dance portions of it, I, 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 sw I could have sworn it was supposed to be some kind of parody video. No dirty tricks, no hidden attack. But the first wanna be the Fucking R2, man. Why did I have to drag R2 into this? It's not like he can dance. What I love the most is that EA jumped in on the Battlefront subreddit to try to justify the, their decision. The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. Yeah, I'm sure it has nothing to do with you maximizing your profits. It's to, it's to provide us with the sense of pride and accomplishment. Go fuck yourselves, EA. Also, that is now the lowest rated Reddit comment ever. So way to go, EA. Way to fucking go. Yeah, there's gonna be a new Mario movie. I thought Nintendo would never touch that again after the embarrassingly bad Super Mario Brothers that came out in 1993. 1993's Super Mario Brothers is so bad that it's not even bad enough to be, it's okay, because there's movies that are really bad, but so bad that they actually go around and become good. Their badness can actually be enjoyed. Movies like The Room, or maybe I'm alone here, but uh, Battlefield Earth works as a comedy for me. Nintendo announced they're partnering up with Illumination Entertainment, which is the same people behind the Despicable Me movies, take that as you will. It's early in development right now, so we really know nothing about it, other than the fact that it's being made. And I am a cynic, and at the same time, I'm a huge Mario fan, so you'd think that I'd be like, no, they shouldn't do this, this is gonna be shit, but I, I have a feeling that they've learned to deal with these things better now, I hope. Dude, the first Super Mario Brothers movie was so bad that they fucked up the costumes. They couldn't get the costumes right. This is what Mario looked like, this is what they came up with. How? I'm sure that the costume is gonna look good this time. It's not a live action movie too, so there's that. I've had my reservations about Ryan Johnson, as I've mentioned here in this channel. The one movie he put out that made everybody go, whoa, that's an amazing movie. I actually hated that movie, the movie Looper. I've gone into detail on why I hate that movie here. So when he was attached to direct the new Star Wars movie that's coming out in, what day is today? It's just about a month away, holy fuck! I should probably get tickets, they're, they're sold out. I, I bet they're sold out. So I wasn't super keen on that, but it turns out 
I'm an idiot, but it looks like Ryan Johnson really pulled this off. Uh, the Last Jedi is looking great from uh, what insiders are saying. So much so that Kathleen Kennedy herself, the big honcho at Lucasfilm, commissioned the guy to make a whole new Star Wars trilogy that has nothing to do with the Skywalker family. This is going to take place in the same universe, but it's a brand new story, a brand new adventure. That could only mean one thing. The Last Jedi is amazing. So while I didn't like Looper, I thought it was way overappreciated. I'm actually pretty hopeful. I think I'm gonna turn around. I'm, I'm gonna turn around on Ryan Johnson. Maybe maybe this is it. Here's the problem though. Here's the problem. Now I'm going to the theater expecting the best film I've ever seen in my life. That's the problem with hype. The best movie experiences I've ever had are movies that I go in not knowing anything and having zero expectations or even expecting the movie to suck. And I can never expect the Star Wars movie to suck. And while it was bad enough that I could never expect the Star Wars movie to suck, so I'm always going to go to the theater hyped, I'm even more so now. So we'll see. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for the best and I'm very psyched for a new Star Wars trilogy. This is incredible. This is going to cement Star Wars even more so as this cultural phenomenon because my dad used to like that when he was younger and now I like it. My children will end up liking uh, this franchise. It's this massive cross-generation phenomenon and it's uh, it's one of a kind really. There's not a whole lot of other things, a lot of, the, a lot of other franchises that can claim this. Definitely not in movies. If you were already a fan of Ryan Johnson, I would imagine that you're psyched for this, so I don't even need to ask you if, if how excited you are about this. Some people, the cynics, are saying that they're just milking the franchise for all it's worth, and by the time the next movie comes out, we're gonna be experiencing some serious Star Wars fatigue, especially considering they're putting out a spin-off movie in between the mainline Star Wars titles. So, what do you think? Do you think you're gonna just grow tired of seeing Star Wars in theaters every year? Or are you like me? Just give me more! Let me know in the comments below. But this has been the News Roundup. I'll catch you guys next time.